It's December of 2019, which means that Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is finally out, with the release of this, the final Star Wars film ever, the galaxy has now achieved star peace, making this Starmistice Day. Merry Xmas, Star Wars is over. But what will a galaxy at peace do? Cultivate the arts and sciences? Will some demobilized stormtrooper finally compose the Jizz Whale opera that heals the galaxy? Will all those Mon Calamari star cruisers be converted back into star liners? Will a new understanding of the Force spark a spiritual renaissance? Who cares? No one will ever have to answer these questions. It's over. None of it matters anymore. In fact, none of it ever mattered. We're finally free. So anyway, who else is watching this show, The Mandalorian? Where have you gone, Baby Yoda? Our nation turns its lonely eyes to you. And I'm, I'm being told that The Mandalorian is in fact a, a, a Star War. Well, since everything is apparently a Star War, I declare that Cats is now the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wops. And it's live, so something's going to happen. From near and far, young and old, people of every shape, ability, and gender, welcome to Loading Ready Live. Today, we listen to this year's hottest new holiday tracks in album review. We test our collective knowledge of Christmas facts in the Merry Christmas. What happens when three talented cooks try to create holiday treats without instructions? Do they fudge it? We concisely categorize capitalism in the Showcase Showdown. And... Pat Pasto. Arrakis teaches us the attitude of the night, chopping off what is incomplete and saying, now it is complete because it's, it has ended here. All this and more on Loading Ready Live, starting right now. Hello and welcome to Loading Ready Live here on the Loading Ready Run Network. Merry Chrysler to all of you and other various uh, festivus -es 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 -es. And a merry Toyotathon to you too, Ben. Happy Christ, Ben <laughs> Grimius. To Toyotathon 2020 is, is quickly approaching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show. We've got all kinds of amazing things going on uh, this, uh, this evening. But today uh, we're starting off with a Merry Quizmas. We're going to be testing. We, we've assembled the three people that know the most about Christmas. <laughs> That's a blatant lie. <laughs> <laughs> They're deep seated and rooted in, in the knowledge. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be quizzing them on, uh, well, one topic in particular, and that is uh, Christmas movies. Oh. The whole, the whole thing is, uh, is around Christmas movies. So we've got our buzzer buttons here. It's going to be the beginning of this uh, quiz is going to be done. Uh, with as a, as a multiple choice kind of a thing, mm -hmm. and uh, then we're going to move on to a lightning round in the uh, in the in, in the in the interim at the end. So, Paul, I think we should just get like right on into it because we got a stack show. Oh. All right, Kathleen guesses B. I didn't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop. A B movie was my favorite Christmas yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, it could be a Christmas movie. Yeah. It's the same it just bit. depends on what time of the year you look at Christmas being in. Uh, you got the first question all locked and loaded, Paul? All right, here we go. Let's do it. Question number one is, The Muppet Christmas Carol was released in 1992 and was Brian Henson's feature directorial debut. In the film, which Muppet plays the role of young Scrooge's headmaster? Is it A, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, B, Fozzie Bear, C, Sam the Eagle, or D, Kermit the Frog? And uh, Paul, do you mind uh, hide and chat? I guess for this one. Probably. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. actually. Pretty good yeah. Uh, scenario here. Uh, looks like everybody's just windmill slam C. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm I'm very happy with this. I wanted to walk everyone nice and uh, nice and simply into this. It is in fact correct. C. Hey. Sam the Eagle hey. plays uh, the role of the headmaster in what is probably my favorite Christmas movie oh, of all time. Happy. I love Muppet Christmas Carol. Shows you to the bone. Yeah, well, it's the fir it's my first experience with the Christmas Carol really? growing up, so I definitely was surprised when I found there was only one Marley. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's roll right along to question number two. 
Question number two is, speaking of The Christmas Carol, when was the earliest surviving film adaptation of the source material released? Was it A, huh. 1901, B, 1908, C, 1910, or D, 1913? I, ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a stab in the dark ooh. here, but... Everybody's got a different answer. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot I'm supposed to be keeping score here. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good point. Well, it's going to be harder in a second. because. Oh, Paul, you've got it? I got it. Oh, great. Thank you. All right. Well... It might surprise you, uh, but you're all friggin' wrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is, in fact, A. Uh, in 1901, Scrooge or Marley's Ghost. It was a silent film, um, as most of the, these early <laughs> ones are. But this is the earliest surviving adaptation of The Christmas Carol. Wow. Yeah, it is pretty wild. I believe that is Scrooge and Marley's Ghost, though. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. I think those were the two variations of the title that it could go by. Uh, okay, it was either yeah. called Scrooge. Or Marley's Ghost. Ghost. So that must have been like one of the very. They were like, okay, we've got this new medium. What do we do with it? A Christmas Carol, of course. Yeah. yeah do you yeah. think they licensed it, or do you think they just made Maybe. it? Maybe. I mean, it's the first. It's a very quick monetization of, mean, of the holidays. Is that <laughs> the first Christmas special? Jeez. Oh. Uh, let's go on to question number three. Question number three is, in 2004, oh. the Polar Express was released and earned the Guinness World Record for being the first all-digital capture film. In the movie, only one character is actually referred to by name. What is it? Is it A, Harry, B, Lily, C, Sally, or D, Billy? Billy. 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 All right, everyone seems, everyone seems very keen, besides Matt. On Billy, going in a different direction and choosing B. The answer is, in fact, D. Yeah. Billy. Billy! Billy is the only one actually referred to by name. Everyone else uh, just sort of has these monikers. Uh, that's why Billy is also known as the Lonely Boy. Mm. There's the Hero Kid. Uh, and very, various other kind of names. Are, are we sure that this just wasn't because the actors didn't want their names associated with the Polar no, Express? No, like, uh, I mean, Tarzan did. did so many roles. <laughs> Unidentified guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just some dude. Yeah. All right, question number four. In 1964, a very strange Christmas film was released, which was later featured on both the original Mystery Science Theater 3000 as well as Elvira's movie Macabre. What was it? Is it A... Santa Conquers the Martians, B, Killer Klaus, C, Christmas Evil, or D, Santa vs. King Kong. Mm. Yeah. It's I the was... MST3K. Mm -hmm. that, that's where you got your, your knowledge? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, have I'm, you seen this episode? I have indeed. Oh, well, there you yep. go. It, everyone is indeed correct. It is A, uh, Santa Claus oh, Conquers the Martians. Good God. It is a hell of a film. <laughs> if you have not watched it, uh, that's all right. Uh, watch the Mystery Science Theater episode. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's that what you should good. do. That's a classic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite good. Uh, the tapes. Moving right along. In the 2000 movie Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Jim Carrey plays the role of the Grinch. Each day, it would take approximately two hours to get him into his green and hairy suit. What kind of hair was the suit covered in, though? Is it A, llama, B, yak, C, horse, or D, synthetic? I have to think through this one logically, because it's, uh, I, well, I'm going to walk in before I actually talk myself yeah. out of it. Because you'll note that none of the animals are green. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, no! Yeah. <laughs> You're telling me there's no green horses? There are no green horses, uh, yet. Yet. I uh, mean, the Wizard of Oz is working on that. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to say llama, because that's nice and long, but... but that hair was very curly, which makes me think it was yak. Yeah, well... You've walked down the correct aisle, Ian, because it is indeed B, yak fur. It wow. was yak fur that was uh, uh, dyed green and then glued to the Holy suit. Holy hell. It took approximately, yeah, two hours to get him into that and then an hour to get him out. Oh. Wow. Yeah, it was a Flash. whole thing. I remember seeing an interview with him saying that it was, he had to, they actually had him like, he was actually training with like special forces, like, how to deal with torture, yes. basically. Yeah, he called it himself was, a Zen master. It was so uh, incredibly horrible to wear. Damn. Yeah. Oh. This is also one of the movies that's noted to have some of the most, like, prosthetics and whatnot needed, because every single extra needed to look like a who that's and all that kind point, of jazz, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah, it was wild. Uh, moving along, Ian's got the lead right now with four. Let's move on to the next question. In the first Gremlins film, which Disney movie do the creepy little critters end up going to see at the movie theater? 
Is it A, Sleeping Beauty, B, Fantasia, C, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, or D, The Nightmare Before Christmas? Okay, okay. Now, Matt and, Matt and Kathleen, you windmill slammed C. Are you, you're just like bringing in your deep something, I don't, I've never seen Gremlins, but Same. something spoke to me as this would be an older movie that would be easier to get the rights to. Yeah. That, oh, okay. No, I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> or, and by Beach, I mean Ian. Well, I, speaking as Beach. Yes, yeah, uh, so what Beach, would Beach say in this? Beach would have said that, uh, that, that uh, Fantasia came out closer to the time frame of Gremlins 2, yeah. therefore yeah. making it possibly contemptuous. Well, so it's not you that's wrong, it's Beach. Oh, good. Beach good. is the one wrong, and Kathleen and, the one, and, Kathleen and Matt are correct. It is, in fact, C. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I believe you're probably <sighs> correct with that assessment, Kathleen. I, I imagine. Yeah. I figured that the dwarves would be role models mm. for the for the, for the, the gremlins? gremlins. Yeah, man, you think they would have learned something? Wow. I think my favorite thing about that too is the fact that like I think it's Spike is wearing the uh, the like the 3D glasses. Yes. <laughs> Watching Snow White <laughs> and the Seven Dwarves, <laughs> and it's like, man, that was not correct no. <laughs> at all. No. Uh, next question. Macaulay Culkin was home for the holidays in the blockbuster film uh, Home Alone. Which city did his family visit, leaving him behind to fend off the burglars? Is it A, Paris, B, Maui, C, London, or D, Ho Chi Minh City? Ho Chi Minh City! <laughs> oh! That, What's that up, would Kathleen? have been amazing. I definitely think I picked the wrong one. Oh well. Well, I, that was my second choice. So, you so are... The wrong one was your second choice? Yes. Yeah, you are all wrong. It was A. It's Paris! It's Paris. Wow. I thought I was like, wait, was that the second one? God, I was mm. hoping you were going to be like, it's Ho Chi Minh City. <laughs> and I'd be like, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, Darn. it is indeed A, Paris, is where, uh, is where they are planning yeah. on heading off you're, to. You're, you're thinking Ho Chi Minh alone. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Sorry, the, 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 the spinoff there. Uh, I think there's one more question in the, the multiple choice here, Paul, or uh, two more? No, I think that's... That was the last one. All right. Oh, well, no. now that means it, oh, the scores are really, really close. Mm -hmm. This is any—it's time for the lightning round. Uh, d d there it is. Well, <laughs> there we go. It's the lightning round. So how this is going to work is we're foregoing the the small buttons, and now you've just got the big red button on top. Whichever one of you rings in first is going to be uh, the one who can answer the question. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be anything written. I'm just going to talk, and the moment you ring in, I'm going to stop. So, so they can stop you before you finish. Yes, asking, if you would like. Oh, no. yeah. okay. All right. You all ready for this? Yeah. Question number one: Who directed A Nightmare Before Kathleen? Tim Burton. You are incorrect. Oh. He didn't direct it. He only produced it. I don't know who directed it. I will give yeah. the opportunity. Who directed A Nightmare Before Christmas? Anyone want to take a stab in the dark? Alan Smithy. You are incorrect. <laughs> Matt, do you want to take a stab at it? Uh, I don't know any director's names. I just know that Kathleen was wrong there. Technically. The answer is Henry Selleck. Huh. Was the director is is he related to Tom Selleck? T Tim Burton actually wasn't that involved in it. He did like a bunch of the early conceptual work. Yes, yeah. there's actually a story <laughs> that goes on where in the original writing, uh, it was supposed to be uh, the doctor as was supposed to be uh, in, was the, was Oogie Boogie oh. like the secret identity was the doctor and Tim Burton got so pissed he kicked in a wall <laughs> at that concept uh, alright question number two in Elf which iconic building does Buddy's real dad work in Kathleen the Empire State Building you are correct Whoa. it is indeed the Empire State Building that's a point for Kathleen question number three what was the name of the toy that Arnold Schwarzenegger's kid wanted in Matt? Oh, specific name I don't have, but it was a... Oh, no. I need the specific name. Evangelion. No, you're incorrect. <laughs> no. That would have oh. been amazing if it was an Evangelion <laughs> toy. <laughs> yeah. Action Man. No, you are incorrect. Would you like to take one a stab at it, Kathleen? I don't even know what movie you're talking about, so I'm going to say He Man. Yeah, I, I can finish it if you'd like. Oh. What was the name of the the What was the name of the toy that Arnold Schwarzenegger's kid wanted in Jingle All the Way? Was it a Tickle Me Elmo? It was not, but okay. it was that color. Uh, the toy was Turbo Man. Oh. Turbo Man, not action, but Turbo. Yeah. Yeah. 
Especially since Arnold Schwarzenegger like ends up dressing up as the toy. Mm-hmm. So if you dressed up as like an Evangelion. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're thinking of one hour photo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Neon Genesis Evangelion. Question number four. What is the name of George Bailey's guardian angel? Kathleen. Clarence. You are correct. Wow. It is indeed Clarence. Question number five. What was the occupation of Hugh Grant's character in Love Actually? Ian. Advertising executive. You are incorrect. (sighs) Kathleen? Songwriter. You are incorrect. Matt? Mall Santa. You are incorrect. (laughs) He was the the prime minister. Oh! Well, I haven't seen Love Actually, so... Same. That's all right. (laughs) Question number six. What did uh, Clark Griswold mm. want to get with his Christmas bonus? A swimming pool. Kathleen is correct. <laughs> it is indeed a swimming pool. Kathleen is cleaning up here <laughs> in the lightning round. But there are still three more questions, so Ooh. anything could happen. Question number seven. Who plays old Jolly St. Nick in the Santa Claus films? Tim Allen. You are correct. <laughs> it is indeed Tim Allen. I feel like Ian may have tried to, like... Ian, yeah, I tried I think Ian buzzed too greedily and too All right, here's what I'll do for these na- last two questions. Kathleen wins this one. For these oh, last two sorry. questions, uh, these are going to be worth two points. Oh. All right. And if Matt gets it, it's three points. Oh, great. <laughs> I, won. I, li- I, I just like things see. getting wild with it. Yeah. yeah. Question number eight. Who were the two main villains... In Batman and Robin. Matt. Uh, Poison Ivy and Miss Dr. Mr. Freeze. You are correct. Yeah. Dr. Oh, Mr. Freeze Dr. is indeed one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Matt gets three points and moves to six. Great. And oh. finally, the final question. What does John McClane write on the sweater of a dead henchman? Ian? Ho, 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 I have a machine gun. Close. Do you want to take another? I'll ho, 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 you... now I have a machine gun? Reverse it. Ah, now, now I have, I have machine a machine gun. gun. Ho, 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 ho. ho. I will give you those points. We'll give you in two points, which means Kathleen is the winner of yeah. our, our Christmas quiz. Good and job. Matt, Matt and uh, Matt and Ian both get second place. Aww. Yay! There you go. It's very holiday feelies. And next year I expect many more questions about my favorite holiday film, like a Dragon, the adaptation of Yakuza 1. I have no idea why you think I would put that in there, but I'll do my best. <laughs> hey, yep. hey, Ben, I think your quiz was great and you did a great job and you shouldn't change anything. It was perfect. All right, I'll do this exact same one next year. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's good, too. That's good, too. Cool. cool. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, friends, for, for being a part of this. Uh, I forget what I'm supposed to throw to you. What? Oh, yes. We did something special uh, because it's the end of the year and... You know, we want to pres- we want to you know preserve our our history and all that kind of jazz. So uh, enjoy enjoy this. Hi, welcome to the 2019 time capsule. Within this case, we will contain things that we felt were important to 2019, and then when we open it in 2050, we can re-experience this year all over again. I'm putting in a USB stick of the final season of Game of Thrones. That way, when we watch it in 2050, we can compare how it ended to how A Song of Ice and Fire ended when the last book is finally released. Everybody else is here and they have their own things they're putting in. Alex, what you got? I have a terabyte of incomprehensible memes. Oh, terrific. That'll be, that'll be handy. I like the one with the ladies yelling at the cat. Cam, what you got? I have 50 terabytes of sociological notes explaining Alex's memes. That's even more useful, actually. I don't even understand them now. Beej, what you doing? I have all of our receipts from 2012. Won't need these anymore. This is a time capsule, not like a shredder. This is not, it's not for like just throwing garbage away. I'll come back then. Can you take, no? Okay. Ben, you have a ladder. Yeah. Uh, I just want to go to the future. So I feel like I'm just going to hop in. Ugh. It's not, no, it's a time, Jesus, time capsule, not a time machine. It's not going to. I can't hear you from the future, Graham. Okay, that'll put a dent in some things. I just put this over here with the other ladders. Ian, good God. 
Oh yeah, I've just uh, I figured it took us a year to get to this point. So by 2050, we've gone through enough pre-releases that this should just be enough to cap us off. So in case you rolled averagely, I don't think you got a single 20. Paul, what's up? I'm going to put my uh, brand new 2019 iPhone in, and that way we can open it in 30 years and see how small it was. Oh. That is a bit of a race, isn't it? That's going to be... I'm going to need bigger pockets. Kathleen, hi. What, what do you have? Oh, I have a rare and precious gem indeed. This is the original version of Cats, with all the manky special effects. Why, why are we preserving this? It's a rare and special gem indeed. We're, yeah. We're gonna need it. No, fair enough. I, I want to see it. All the visible crew and Judy Dench's strange human hand. Matt, hi. I'm gonna put in my clutch of Pokemon so that all those eggs can grow up in a bright new age. Clutch of Pokemon is a collective noun I didn't know I never wanted to hear. Hi, Heather. Hey. Well, Graham, no one can forget the PlayStation Vita. That's not from 2019. No one can forget. It's very personally affected by the PlayStation Vita. Beach, hi. I worked it out. Um, I'm going to throw in my ring fit so that I can be fit in 2050. I'm glad you're taking care of future Beach's ring. James. Uh, so 2019 was important to science. We finally know what a black hole looks like. I was going to print out the photo, but our printer's not working. So I drew my own. Wow, it's 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 like we're there. I thought so. It's pretty. Terrific. Well, now that everyone's put their things in the time capsule, sorry, sorry, I just realized that that's my my actual phone. I think it's under cats. I can't. There it is. Yeah, I I need this to check my email. We'll just have to imagine how small phones were back in back in 2019. Great. Well. That's all in there, so now we lock it up and uh, uh, cast it into the sea? What do you do with a time, uh, time capsule? Put it in the prop office. Put it in the prop office. We'll need, we may need more shelves. All right. Well, there we are. There's our 2019. Now back to the other side of this studio. Hello. Do you like sounds in your ears? I sure do. If you like music, why not buy our new album of Christmas classics, available on two cassettes, or five cassettes, or one large cassette. It features such amazing musical Christmas classics as, holy crap, is it ever snowing? Oh, holy crap, the snow is always falling. I can't even find my car in the parking lot. It can't be snowing anymore. Oh no, I can't even open my door. The snow is always falling I cannot even go to sleep tonight If I don't shovel my walks They'll get me Get me. <laughs> or 12 even smaller cassettes. Yes, this collection, painstakingly assembled by real Santa's elves, which, which exist and that we have on staff, features other classics, like this one. Thank God for gift receipts! You got me this, you got me that, I don't want it, this stupid hat, I'm bringing it to I can't get through the door There's a 
Mom over here, mom over there, kid on the ground, kid on the door. I don't want to be free. I open the door and I go to Macy's. I look at the receipt and it don't make much sense. I hop over onto Santa's fence, and there it's a line. And I'm at the end. And there I see my friend. He says, Come cut in line, come cut in line, you don't need to wait, come cut in line, you don't need to wait, come cut in line, don't wait, wait, come cut in line. Then a mom says, I have waited it for two friggin' hours. Then a child cries and he drops a sucker on the floor. I slip on the sucker, then I fall concussed, and now I'm at the hospital bed. Hospital bed, 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 hospital bed. Or if you'd prefer, one extra thick cassette. Put all of them inside your ears. And then, after all the turkey is inside your bodies and you've had all the things that you're supposed to have, like all of your veggies, it's dessert time and everyone loves sitting around the Christmas table and singing that classic, the chocolate gorging song. One piece of cocoa, two pieces of cocoa. How many of these can I fit inside me? I'll find out tonight. I'll find out before my throat gets too tight. My friend, I knew you were going to try this. Yes, I was. But I know you're allergic to chocolate and I fear. One EpiPen won't be nearly enough. I'm a big boy. I think your death might be so near. It's the chocolate the gorging time of the year. It's the, the chocolate gorging time of the year. Every time that I come over, you're trying to eat even more. I'm eating them all, and I'm eating them as you burst through that door. We can keep doing this, Charlie. I want you to live and have kids. In your house, out on the skid. It's the chocolate gorging time of the year. It's the chocolate gorging time now that you're here I can't breathe oh get yeah, let's go to the hospital okay. yeah let's okay. go let's go, yeah. let's go. or alternately an incalculable number of eight tracks order now send me your money and your address I'll bring them to your house or maybe I won't choose wisely in the meantime, thanks to Beej on guitar. Now enjoy these delightful Loading Ready Run Stream highlights. Welcome to this week's highlights. Oopsie doopsie. Graham's not here yet. I'm going to play a good game. Beej, you can come up now. Ow! Are you, are you okay? I'm fine. The concussion is not a game. I'm okay. I'm fine. <laughs> Goodbye. Are you afraid of the dark? 
Um, what the fuck? Does it... Awesome. It was that guy. Fucking awesome. You killed that guy from 50 meters away. Awesome. You're the strongest man alive. I am. Oh my goodness. Oh, you're so dead. It's been a pleasure serving with you all. <laughs> so we roll one die. We add six to it. That's our skill score. Obviously, we want to roll a six. Doesn't always happen, but we're going to see. Ooh, that's a nice smelling tea. What is that? Just this coffee with eggnog in it. Cool. Good to know I have a, uh, a functioning sense of smell. I don't want to make it sound like I'm vindictive because I'm actually very vindictive. Yeah. But can we track her down? For no reason whatsoever. I mean, she also like Revenge. put us all to sleep. So like at the same time, I wasn't really feeling super confident about saying no to her. Yeah. And since you are going to be exploring caves, here's a lump of stickle wax in case you get bitten by a gronk. I don't know what either of those things are, but thanks. It's <laughs> not a sense. Here's some stickle wax. Don't get bitten by a gronk. Oh god. Imagine if just like later on in the book. Yeah. You were it was just like <laughs> in the darkness, a gronk eats you. If you have the stickle, stickle wax, wax, yeah. That's <laughs> turn like the to page ten. That's like running into the prompt of like if you have the spider in the jar with the human face, like you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this drill press. What? We have obtained interaction. That kid said he needed a diamond P. I need the I need the hardest urination on Moe's urination scale. Well, holy oh, fuck! Here it goes. Why is your best friend hat on the microphone? <laughs> because that microphone is my best friend, Graham. I wonder if it feels the same way about you. No, it definitely doesn't, no. <laughs> Is this even possible? What the fuck? Uh, give me a dex save. Oh, no. Uh, 14. My mother used to tell me a story of the time that she helped out with a friend's wedding, wherein she was asked to move the wedding cake. Oh. And in Canada, in the Commonwealth, I don't know about the United States, but frequently wedding cakes are made of fruit cake, which is uh, an extremely dense material. My mother found out quite to her surprise that this was not made of fruit cake and was in fact like a lemon cake and almost yeeted it <laughs> right up. <laughs> but was able to stop herself because she passed her deck save much like you did. Oh. <laughs> Just jam it left. It's always been it's always worked for me. We're back to the center already. That guy? Fuck. Uh the Okay. <laughs> we are pillbox now. Fight for motherland. I will never forgive the Connect's voice uh, capabilities. For the time I was playing Mass Effect 3, just hanging out in an area, you know, all nice and, and, and everything was fine, and Corey from the kitchen yells, Grenade! <laughs> How many IGIs are in this deck? Two? Three. James hates fun. <laughs> All right, let's draw the third IGI now. <laughs> Is there a sun in the sky? Holy shit, no! We're in hell, people! There is no sun! There's a hole in, in the trees. Oh. I... <laughs> the illusion of choice. Uh, I learned a thing or two in my time. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the illusion of choice. Should have followed the sign, Ben. Fuck this game. When you wrote cat person on your character sheet, yes. I thought that was like you're special because you know you're a cat person. You're like yeah, you like cat. Not that you are no, actually no. a living uh, a cat. Here, we have right. a, we have a picture of what I look like here on the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good. I was on Booth Boot the whole time because that was a really good run. That was a really good run. That was a really good run. Let's put you in the, back in the virtual world with me. You're still enjoyable. Good. I cannot wait to see uh, the sound of that mixed with the uh, with my, my my grunting and and kneeling and moving around and frantic flailing. I am here to close you down for 24 hours until the rat infestation can be brought under control. Well, I wouldn't call it an infestation. I would. <laughs> Luckily, your opinion is completely irrelevant. <laughs> Can't shoot through doors? Can't shoot through doors. I swear to God, if we fall, I am fucking leaving. <sighs> Fuck, that was close. Everything wants to kill me in here. <laughs> I want to see where this road leads. There was some money bags there. Nowhere. Ooh. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, stuck the landing. Thread the needle. Good. Out. Or do you sink like a stone? Let's find out. Or just die. Place your bets now. Vote now on your phones. No falling damage. So yeah, it didn't break my fucking ankle. So uh, we <laughs> <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> I can go shopping. Where can you go shopping at, Kathleen? My goodness, I can go to. Okay, here it goes. Face off. Ready. Set. Scissors. 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 <sighs> what is that face? Don't make me laugh. I could say the same to you. Look, I'm gonna keep okay, picking scissors until you around. stop picking scissors. Let's go. Okay, here it goes. Face off. Ready. Set. Scissors. Scissors. 360. I laughed so hard a beast appeared in front of you and kills you. 360. Ah! <laughs> Adam! <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> oh my god. You must fight it. Normal edged weapons have little effect on lava worms. If you possess a pouch of salt. Nice. Turn to 21 if you do not have salt. You must fight the lava worm with your sword. Turn to 336. Oh, I'm sorry. If there's one thing Adam Savadan <laughs> has, it's, it's salt. It's a bitch of salt. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. I produce salt. Oh my god. Well, let's check my character sheet, shall we? Bag of salt. Oh, would you look at that? Sometimes. Come on, X, 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 come on, X! Yeah! X! Anyway, this game is called What on Earth Is That? Fucking awesome is what it is. I crashed. Remember when we, when we had a girlfriend? Six? 
Remember when we had two girlfriends? Seven? Remember when we had three girlfriends? Eight? Remember when we had four girlfriends? This one is interesting. These are some of the best ragdolls I've seen in ages. Oh, they are just fucking going. Boing, <laughs> see ya. I don't like shooting two-handed. <laughs> But it's like you got double the guns. Yeah. <laughs> Just ignoring it now. <laughs> this gives a much better experience. Ooh. Oh, they put a thing. You know, pri one of them. <laughs> the fucking animus. Oh, goodbye. Ah. <laughs> mm. <sighs> You went and touched the wrong polygons. <laughs> Fucked up. Let's do shoes. Half off. And not one of those silly bogos. I mean, this is kind of oh, half off. Man, up. this one's fucked up. This looks like a really clever way to make use of, like, a physics it, engine. It, <laughs> well, could be, it could be improved if we were throwing turnips down to feed a goat. Of, like, an old board. <gasps> Holy oh shit! Oh my god, you did it! Yeah! <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> you missed it. No, you're fucked now. Now you're stuck in the tube. <laughs> you can't back up. <laughs> We've got ghost powers, dude. Whoops. Are you fucking kidding me? What did you fall down there for, man? I... Are you fucking kidding me? Fuck it. We'll get there on foot if we have to. Wait, what? <gasps> I am a sound. Okay. Let's roll with that. Chemical container. Nitrogen. Oh. I. Danger, flammable liquids. Caution, liquid nitrogen. <laughs> you ever... You've messed around in a lab before. You ever accidentally light liquid nitrogen on fire? Your turn. Uh, well, it's all messed up, so oh, yeah. here. No matter what you select... I just pick one. I didn't look at the board. No, that's... Heather, that's exactly what I do when I'm playing this game. Oftentimes I've found that just, like, jamming directly to the far left or right is also a good option. Oh! oh Holy God! shit! <laughs> You're the one who sucks! <laughs> Turn to... Lips. <laughs> Never do that again. You're banned. Let's go up this bell Look at the time. I'll try again tomorrow. You mother... No, it's too late to engage with the plot. Fine. I guess we'll go back to Shenhua's house and play face off. <laughs> we want to serve coffee. We're going to serve coffee. And then we'll have our revenge. We're going to do, you know what? The holiday season is among us. It's a time of gifting. It's a time of giving things to people, so that means it's time for a showcase showdown! Woo! <sighs> Hooray! Oh, so I'm very excited, my treasured friends. Uh, we did a coin toss before we started, and Cameron, you won. I did. So that means that I you totally won. have the honor of getting to listen very carefully to what I'm saying for the whole segment, so James, you can go first. Oh boy, wait. <laughs> All right, James, are you ready? Heck yeah. Our, it's Christmas, or it's almost Christmas. It's almost Christmas. It's Christmas adjacent. Four days. So I assume you're dreaming of snow and sleigh bells. Yes. Cozy fires. Absolutely. The frozen kiss of an icy breeze upon your cheek. Sure. Well, too bad, because this showcase is taking you to Christmas Island. Oh, wait, Christmas Island? That sounds fun. Yes. That's OK. Uh... Hey! Hey! What is this? This is the flag of Christmas Island. Okay. It's in the one in, it's the one in the Indian Ocean. 
Okay. That's part of Australia. Hey, hey I've never got, been to Australia. You're That's going exciting. to Australia, James, Sweet. possibly if the price is right. Anyhow, Christmas Island is known for its red crabs. These colorful crustaceans migrate annually from the monsoon fed jungles out to the beaches where they all have a big crab orgy and then lay their eggs in the sea. That sounds like a fun time. And do you know what I'm talking about? No, but oh. I mean, you said crabs and orgy, so I'm in. These clips have gone fairly viral online, so let's let's show a clip of what is going on. Uh, so James is familiar with the red crab migration on Christmas Island. Uh, they're here oh, them getting down oh, to the sea. Jesus. Like, they have to close roads because not only is are they running over a lot of these crabs, uh -huh. but also, the, like, their shells are very hard and they puncture car tires, so it's actually quite dangerous. So, so currently we're watching a bunch of crabs bone. Oh, well, what? Well, some of them, they're probably already d done boning at this point because they're on their way to the sea. How uh, is this man? Wow. Okay, He's so just, this is... That is a light foot. This is... This is a miracle of nature. Put me down. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, um, because crabs are impossible to keep to a schedule, because mm -hmm. they're crabs, I'm not going to be able to guarantee that you will become immersed in a sea of horny crustaceans, but if you ever had any chance of having your trousers climbed by a crab with a boner, yep. this is it, James. I mean, I'm in. <laughs> Anyhow, Boner that's crabs. free. That, seeing those crabs is free. That's just part of Christmas Island. Okay. Uh, it'll happen no matter whether you like it or not. Okay. So now we have to get you to Christmas Island. Absolutely we do. There is actually one way to get you to Christmas Island. I looked for, like, alternative bad ways, but it's you fly to Perth and you fly to Christmas Island. That's it. Hey, per okay, cool, cool. That's I it. can that's kidnap the Funko then. You can't even take a crappy boat. Sweet. All right. Oh. So anyhow, so that so there you're, you're on Christmas Island. Uh, can I get picture one three up now? Uh, now, so there's the Christmas Island Airport. You'll be seeing that. Uh, I okay. would also like to point out that Christmas Island is technically the top of a massive underwater volcano, so it's quite vulnerable to uh, climate change. Okay. So I've also thrown in 100,000 miles of air travel carbon offsets. Uh, 100,000 miles of carbon. Oh, good I lord. I don't know if that does anything, but it makes me feel better. So, okay. You know, okay. Sure. Uh, all right, so now we'll get to Christmas Island. So you're going to be staying at the Glamorous Ocean View Apartments. Oh, there they are. Mm, wait, wait, where? Oh, I can't see the ocean in the back. Yeah, yeah. No, the ocean view is not a lie. Okay. So if now, I get up on the roof, I suppose. These are the worst rated accommodation on Christmas Island, according to TripAdvisor. Interestingly. Oh, they're kind of crabs in there. There are so few accommodations on Christmas Island. The, like, the Visit Christmas Island website will just literally show you pictures of anybody who's willing to rent out a guest room. <laughs> but they won't show you this place. <laughs> but this place has many amenities. Uh, can I get my first amenity up? Look, they've got a kitchenette. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> they've got a couch. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I would, I would sit on and those. And a love seat that's just directly beside the couch. That's not a love seat, that's two chairs. Oh. Well, they didn't need to be two pictures for that. <laughs> and they also have an Ikea bed frame. So naturally, I've booked you I, for a two-week stay. I had, I used to have that bed frame. Yeah, just like home. Yeah, I 100% used to like have I that bed frame. I needed to find you the worst place to stay on Christmas Island, which is actually beautiful, but I was committed to send you here by nature of the bed. I appreciate the art behind it that makes it look like we're, we have a nice view from our bedroom. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, not ocean view from where you are. All right, yeah. uh, I'll sleep in the bed. Funko, you can take that love seat. Okay, good, good. Um, now, since you will be spending two weeks in Christmas Island, you should take in some of the local activities. Absolutely. Like the Rock Rider Santa Lolly Run. <laughs> Which, as far as I can tell, is some sort of festive dirt bike ride that goes through town. Sure. And if we get our next picture, you can see they've brought out Santa, and look, he's wearing his traditional jandals. Oh, of course he is. <laughs> because Christmas is in summer down in Australia. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> There's not a lot to do in Christmas Island, uh, so you'll have to make your own fun. But uh, I've also, in the branch of making your own fun, I've signed you up to participate in the annual I Lizard Census. <laughs> uh-huh. So these are so there's critically endangered blue-tailed skinks and listers geckos. Okay. And so you walk around and see how many of these you can count. I'm gonna guess none because you're not from Christmas Island. But then you also get to do some manual labor uh, to rebuild and uh, to make lizard habitat in their lizard breeding centers. So if mm -hmm. we get the next picture up, there that could be you putting a post into a bin, James. <laughs> I've always wanted to put a post into a bin. <laughs> So anyhow, uh, and finally, uh -huh. you're going to be in Christmas Island. You're going to be over there alone without your family or loved ones. Just Funko there. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, 
Uh, <laughs> uh, I hope he's not mad at me. Uh, but so I've decided that, you know, you're going to be spending an Australian, uh, an Australia. Uh, so I'm throwing in a copy of Tim Minchin's classic Australian holiday yeah. song, White Wine in the Sun. And get our picture up here. Hell yeah, that's a great song. You're getting an MP3 format because the CD is out of print. <laughs> <laughs> I posted about this song on my Twitter like a week ago. Uh, so, that's a good song. So anyhow, that's uh, So that was probably about a buck. Uh, well, I don't know. This I all need could to figure be yours yeah. if the price is, is right. Yeah, now I need to figure out. So, uh... Do I get to know uh, who's flying me to... Uh... I literally took the cheapest airline. Okay. Now, I will tell you, it's only Qantas that will take you to Christmas Island. Christmas Island. And that flight goes, like, once a week. Okay. Um, so, I'm keeping this. There's no way in hell I'm giving it to Cameron. Uh, Generous. Yeah, no. Um, so, flight to Australia. And then to Christmas Island. And then Christmas Island. So, that's probably that. And I'm there for two weeks. You're there for two weeks. Uh, and there's a carbon offset. The Don't carbon offset that. is the one that I have no idea. I have zero idea what a carbon offset is. Keep your costs. guesses to yourself, chat. Um, I'm going to say... Um, like it, it, My brain wants me to... 100,000 mile... Is that what you said? 100,000 miles. 100,000 mile offset. Miles, not kilometers. Why so many? Because it's an American website. Oh. I just picked the third biggest one because I figured that's not going to be that's going to cover this trip but also you've traveled for cons this year sure okay you're just trying to offset me entirely for yeah. the last year that's appreciated uh okay um God, I have no how, no idea how much that's going to cost probably okay um I'm going to say um uh uh seven thousand mm -hmm. uh four hundred mm -hmm. twenty dollars and mm -hmm. sixty nine cents okay let's see if let's see if you're right all after right. we talk about Cameron's showcase. Yeah. All right, Cameron, after that showcase, are you thinking about a tropical holiday getaway, exploring new places and lying on sandy beaches? No. <laughs> that's great, because that's where I'm also sending you. Oh. Except for the tropical holiday and the sandy beaches. In fact, I'm sending you to Christmas Island. <laughs> <laughs> Nova Scotia, Christmas Island, Nova Scotia. Okay, that's in Cape Breton Island, to be exact. So the Canadian Christmas Island is not actually an island. It is a com it is it is a it going is a, on a live vacation. It is according to Wikipedia a community within the Cape Breton Regional Municipality. It has and I quote a post office, a fire hall and a very small population. And I looked Okay, can I get the second picture up here? I looked and looked and looked for this community on Google Maps. I found the post office, I found the fire hall, that was it. And you go to the, like, what's labeled as, as Christmas Island, Nova Scotia, this is what you see on Street View. Ah, <coughs> Hinton. Yes. Oh, le no, it's less than Hinton. Oh my. Yeah. So anyhow, to be getting there, you're going to be flying a uh, glamorous wet jet, West Jet Economy <laughs> from Victoria, B.C. to Sydney, Nova Scotia, direct except for stops in Calgary, Ottawa, and Halifax. <laughs> that's a lot of chances to get shuffled into the middle seat. <laughs> ah, that's the hope. Uh, that is actually not going to get you to the bustling metropolis that is Christmas Island. Uh, that's about 60 kilometers away and also your problem. And also, because climate change affects us all, you're you're also getting 100,000 kilometers of carbon Ooh. or 100,000 kilometers of carbon offsets for you as well. I don't know if it's kilometers and miles. I think it might be miles. It's a lot. The price is the same either way. So once you get to Christmas Island, uh, you're gonna stay in literally the only place listed on Airbnb in the general area. <laughs> right? I Go looked. on. This is. Go on. It's actually really nice. Uh, if I can get my next picture, here it is. What? It's this entire cozy country cottage that, that overlooks like you could get crabs. Broad or Lake, and like, and it's really nice. It it's got a good view, and because James got two weeks, you also get two weeks here. Yeah. Oh boy! Okay. So what activities are there to do? Well, I mentioned there's the fire hall, which unless you are on fire, is you know <laughs> doesn't really have a lot to offer you. But there is the famous Christmas Island Post Office. There it is. So. The Christmas Island Post Office is a special holiday destination because 24 years ago, an enterprising Canada Post worker by the name of Margaret Rose McNeil, who was probably just honestly coming up with a way not to lose her job because look at the size of Christmas Island. They're going to close that post office eventually. <laughs> um, asked Canada Post to design a special postmark for Christmas Island. And can oh. I get a picture of the postmark? So there you go. So if you, so it was, it's a huge hit. 
Uh, people love this thing because then mm. you can, if you send something from Christmas Island, they'll put their special Christmassy postmark on it. Oh. So uh, every year between uh, October and December, more than 15,000 postage stands from all over the world send their mail on unnecessarily long and wasteful carbon journeys to <laughs> Christmas Island so they can get this coveted postmark that nobody else will give a crap about. And you can too if you go in person, and you will because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> but I warn you, they're getting 15,000 pieces of mail this time of year, you're probably going to have to wait in line. <sighs> but since you're already in line at the Christmas Island Post Office, don't forget to pick up your sh shipment of legal Nova Scotia marijuana. <laughs> 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 Look, you're in a cabin in the middle of nowhere. What are you going to do? And that's right. You can order legal weed via the mail in Nova Scotia via the government's official website. But as I discovered today in trying to make this joke work, you are not allowed to look at the website unless you go to a marijuana store in Nova Scotia. Get them to look at your ID and then they'll give you an access code that you have to type into the website. So I That's... had to find this screenshot from Global News. That's <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But Cameron, I figure you got a lot of time to kill. There's two weeks in Christmas Island, so I ordered you the maximum amount, the maximum legal amount an adult is allowed to possess in Canada of White Widow, which is, of course, the second cheapest strain here. <laughs> second cheapest. Do we get to know how much the legal, the most you can buy is? No, that's, that's part of the trivia. That's fair. All right, so now, it is, now that you're in the right state of mind, you've got your weed, you've got your place to stay, you've got your, you know, personal hill journey to go into. So let's pick up the last thing for waiting for you at the post office. It's your VH, VHS copy of Christmas <laughs> Comes to Packland. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I chose right. <laughs> Regarded by many sources as one of the worst Christmas specials of all time, this Hanna-Barbera produced commercial for Pac-Man toys was unleashed onto an unsuspecting public in 1982, where it was immediately forgotten, but then rediscovered in the age of online listicles! So, some lists <clears throat> put this as only the fourth worst holiday special of all time, some say it's the second. But really, art is subjective, so you decide this one yourself, Cameron. <laughs> and all this could be yours, whether you want it or not, if the price is right. So, Cameron, to recap, you get uh, airfare most of the way to Christmas Island. <laughs> and I have to walk the rest of the way, Yes, yeah, so you right? have to walk the rest of the way. Or I could uh, thumb it. Yeah, yeah. You get 14 nights. At, at that little Airbnb in the middle of nowhere. Question, when you were looking at this Airbnb, did you happen to see if they have the amenity VHS player? I didn't. Sucks to be you. <laughs> oh no, I can't watch the I'm, I'm going to go on a limb though and say that Airbnb, Airbnb absolutely has a VHS player. Yeah, you could just open the drawer of tapes and be like, the ring, the ring, the ring, the ring. The actual film, the ring, the ring. The ring. Uh, <laughs> you also get uh, uh, an official uh, uh, Christmas Island postmark. Mm -hmm. uh, you get uh, the maximum allowable uh, amount of White Widow uh, <laughs> sativa leaning. Oh, sativa! You say? Uh, uh, yeah, it says it's a it's a sativa leaning uh, uh, with a THC percentage of fifteen to twenty percent. So uh, it is strong. Oh. Which is probably wow. for the best. Why is there no preview available for that one? I, I the demand, I suppose. <laughs> it's just flying off the shelves. They, they can't take a photo. So you got me the equivalent of like Labatt's <laughs> blue weed. <laughs> probably. And uh, and and a VHS, an original VHS copy of Christmas Comes to Packland because surprisingly, it's never been re-released. Huh. I feel, I feel like there's a shining style story of somebody like snowed in in a tiny cottage with only the VHS copy of Packland Christmas. I mean, that's basically the lighthouse. If you just <laughs> assume that uh, 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 Robert Pattinson is a Pac-Man Christmas special. <laughs> All right. All right, Cameron, what okay. do you think? Well, okay, 14 nights in the B&B. &B. Uh-huh. I'm going to say that comes out to about two-ish grand. Uh-huh. The flights there, and do I get a flight back, or do I have to thumb it back? No, no, it's all, it's all, it's all included. Okay, um, let's say a reasonably cheap. I'm going to say, and then the weed. White Widow can't be that much. Like, well, you get... I, well, you saw in the picture, it was ten ninety eight a gram. Right. And you're so... getting the maximum allowable. 
So if you know how much the maximum allowable is, you can work it out. Let's say half a kilo. I don't know. <laughs> Damn. That's a lot of weed. $4,200, Kathleen. $4,200. Excellent. Okay. So so you're guessing $4,200, and James, you guessed Oh, and the Carbonoff sets. So, so, right. All right. Yeah, I, I'm going to stick with you're that. You're going to stick with $4,200, and then, okay. James, you just you guessed $7,429. $20.69. $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, right. right. Okay. Okay. So, let's start with James's showcase. Yeah. <clears throat> First of all, uh, one. The joy of seeing red crabs mate in their annual beautiful migration. Priceless. Free. Priceless. Mm. Uh, many people pay a lot of, <laughs> a lot of Look at all those eggs. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, Do I get to meet David? No. Damn it. He is old and infirm. That's fair. <laughs> He's a delicate man. Don't breathe on him. <laughs> he, but look you, how delicately he picked his way through those mating crabs. I am actually, About 30 years ago, I, probably. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I would love to go to a Christmas Island for like a two-week vacation. It looks rad as heck. All right, so. Um, he was so, eaten by But how much does it cost for one adult to fly to Perth and then Christmas Island? Using the cheapest flights I could find, this is return, $2,720. Uh, I, so I put it around like. 2000 like 18 to 2000 is what i figured so i'm a little low there or yeah All right. out of curiosity is flying to christmas island more expensive than flying from canada to perth i can't imagine it is, is not it uh that's the vancouver to perth leg was 1600 oh, dollars. Okay. the perth to christmas island leg was uh just over a thousand okay all right all right uh your air travel carbon offset this i have I'm 190 dollars so... usd about 250 dollars canadian Wow, that's way cheaper than I thought. And okay. so what you get for that is they contribute to like reforestation programs and sure. stuff like that. Okay. So, eh, not a bad, not, as long as it's on the legit, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. All right. Uh, the worst rated accommodation yeah. on uh, Christmas Island uh, comes in at a mere $89 Canadian per night, okay. making your total stay there $1,246. Okay. Uh, for the Rock Rider Santa Lolly Run, it's a fundraiser for the for the Christmas Island daycare. So I figured you couldn't get out of there without putting in a five. I'll, so that's um, what I ha costed it at. Joke's on you. I will donate whatever the remainder is to get me to the exact <laughs> amount of my showcase showdown. Mm. I win! <laughs> the lizard census. Oh, yeah, right. You have to actually, that's a volunteer gig. They're not going to pay you. You yeah. probably have to pay them. But Christmas Island is a profoundly not online place. Do you know how you join, you like sign up for this lizard census? You have to phone someone to make a booking. Wow. Okay. So I was like, cool, not doing that. Uh, so uh, free 99. But what wasn't free was that Tim Minchin song off of Amazon. <laughs> Buying the MP3 will cost you $2. $2. All right. So I was way, way over. Which but I didn't go over. Yes. So I guess uh, I'll take it. You, uh, you did, by the rules oh, of the Oh, sorry. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I did went way over. Never so mind. So your showcase cost $4,223. But that doesn't... Yeah, you couldn't get a vacation. That's the absolute cheapest you could do a vacation in Christmas Island for. That doesn't include, like, car rental or food. Is that Canadian? That's Canadian? That's Canadian. All right. We'd I'll have to, I'll to strongly to consider about this. Seems cool as heck. It does. Anyhow, Cameron, your showcase, which is also cool because Cape Breton is a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. uh, your airfare most of the way was one thousand two hundred and two dollars. Yeah. And okay. the additional two hundred and fifty dollars for carbon credits. So you know about fifteen hundred dollars. Uh oh. Fourteen nights at that Airbnb. It was eighty five dollars Canadian a night for that really? place. Really? That's it? Well, it's another thousand bucks. It's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, Cameron. nobody's gonna go there. So that's twelve hundred dollars about. Okay. You're getting a postmarked thing from Christmas Island. Uh, that will cost you 85 cents for the stamp. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the maximum allowable limit, according to the government website, is 30 grams per an adult. 30 so grams. I got you 30 grams of White Widow, which cost $329.40. God, that's so much weed. That's a lot of bad weed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but. Ugh. How much does Christmas comes to Packland cost? Because it's surprisingly expensive because it's a collector's item. I'm, I'm going to guess that costs... Uh, did, where'd you find it? Amazon. Amazon. It's a reseller. Okay, I'm going to guess that's uh, Ooh. 80 bucks. If it's one of the ones with it's algorithmically generated, it could be like $4,000. It's true. Right? Uh, it is, uh, in Canadian, $59.18. All right, But also 22 minutes of your life you'll never get back. 
<laughs> so that means, Cameron, your total showcase value was $3,031.43. Oh, we both went over. Which yeah. means neither of you go on these trips. I wasn't going to send you on anyhow. Dang it. Oh. oh. So the, a bit of a holiday bummer. Oh. The fact that Cam was within like 20 bucks of uh, James's is... Oh, did he guess really close to me? I don't remember what he guessed. Yeah. He guessed 420. Like mm. 4,200. Yeah, that mm. was, yeah. Yeah, I should have went 4,269 cents. Dang. Oh, well. Oh. Well, nobody gets to go to Christmas Island, Canadian oh. or otherwise. Or otherwise. Oh, well. But you know what we do get to do? Yeah? Is we get to watch this next clip, which is... <gasps> oh! Which we get to watch me and Cameron and Ian try, try to, to make, make fudge! fudge. <laughs> which doesn't seem that hard, but... in theory. But if you have no idea yeah. and can't follow instructions, because you can't, you're not allowed, you're allowed to look, to look at, the at instructions. Then you get what we're calling fudge it. Hello and welcome to fudge it. Today we're going to do something really nice for our friends because the holidays are coming up. Mm -hmm. We're going to make them some fudge. Ooh. Do you know how to make fudge? No. I don't know how to make fudge. That's the point. Yes. Right. Can we look up how to make the fudge? No. What, okay. what could go wrong? It's just like sugar and um, milk, maybe? Is it? Butter? Yeah, probably. Cream probably of, a lot of butter. Cream of tartar? That's just like for like stabilizing egg whites. I need some sort of binder in there. But you wouldn't use Do eggs because you can't unbake a cake, right? Like, unless you're just using like egg yolks. I don't actually know what I'm doing. Neither do I. Uh, but is... we're just melting sugar, and that's probably only about 400 degrees, so that's probably fine. Somebody get a fire extinguisher. So, as you can see, nobody here knows how to make fudge, so it's just going to be great. And we're not going to look it up. So let's go to the store and buy whatever the hell you put in fudge. Cocoa. I agree. I'm going to do raisins. Oh, <laughs> condensed milk and look at that on the light stuff that's a recipe for fudge i'm not gonna look at it vanilla it's the finest of the flavors and it goes in my fudge got my candy thermometer got my butter got my vanilla got my sugar got my pans what else goes in fudge that's necessary I've got whipping cream, I've got a pound of butter, and then I also got Tiny containers, perfect. Oh, I got cocoa, peppermint extract, mini candy canes, and condensed milk. It can't be any more complex than that. Yeah. Right? I am going first. What I wound up picking up at the grocery store was butter, because for some reason I think fudge has butter in it. Whipping cream. I'm also allergic to, 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 uh, fudge so dairy seemed like a good reason for that sugar then we bought enough sugar for us all to share uh, i think we went on granulated sugar we have cocoa kathleen and i elected to do candy canes i have no idea what i'm looking for on this my fudge is going to be less chocolate based and more on the vanilla end of the spectrum, which is why I purchased the vanilla extract. Himalayan pink sea salt, just for sprinkling on top to give that added bit of mm, flavor. Butter for our fat, and we're using condensed milk uh, for binding, for liquid. I'm not going to use anything more than just this. And of course, sugar. I am gonna put condensed milk in my fudge. I'm gonna put some butter in there. I'm gonna put a pinch of salt in because I like salty things. Uh, but I am gonna deviate from the norm because I got peppermint extract and I got some candy canes. So I'm gonna smush them up because this is festive fudge, hopefully. This is the pot that uh, people have been uh, using and I'm gonna get a bigger pot. Why condensed milk over just milk? I'm more with condensed milk because I want to make sure that we don't have to boil too much out of it. Um, fudge has to crystallize and set, and uh, if we uh, add too much non-stuff, it's just not going to set. I have noticed that we have two burners. 
and two pots. So I'm going to choose to believe that in one of these, I'm going to melt sugar. And in the other, I'm going to combine the dairy ingredients. And then what I'm going to do is once the sugar is melted, I'm going to add it very slowly to the dairy. Because if I think if I add the dairy to the sugar, it will just instantaneously flash all the water in the milk into steam, causing an explosion. <sighs> oh, thank Christ. Thank God we have uh, information on the back of this candy thermometer. Oh, fudge is on here. That's, it's the same as softball. I thought so. What an age we live in. 116 to 240, fudge. That's a big range. 116 is Celsius, 240 is Fahrenheit. Those are two different uh, scales of temperature and be aware of the difference. I would just like to point out between softball and hardball, there's a uh, harmba ball. It's H H R A H R M ball. Herm ball. The secret temperature. What? We'll use that to grease up the pan. What are you greasing the pan for? That's gonna allow the, uh, hopefully, the sugar to not stick to the pan as much. I don't do a lot of baking. I made cookies one year. Uh, I don't really make bread. I um, I cook at home, you know, because I'm a I'm a grown man. Um, I don't I don't do this kind of stuff. I would want 850 mils, no, to make a liter of syrup. No, that is. How do I math? Well, it's 100 milliliters. So we'll use half of this because the resolution on our instruments is kind of low. This is 118. I feel like I've looked up exactly enough stuff to get myself into trouble. So you've made simple syrup. Yeah, it's quite s s s sludgy. I don't cook with a induction cooktop at home, so it's uh, hard to gauge how fast things need to be turned up. This is gonna be delicious. Condensed milk is s sweet by itself, isn't it? Yes, it is. Concentrated milk, sugar, and lactose. So not only has sugar been added to this, but two separate kinds of sugar have been added to this. Okay, power. No, no, lower. 120, sure, that's the kind of resolution we're going to operate on, and that's the kind of resolution we're going to operate on, and we'll watch it. What's holding my fudge together? Sugar. Two cups of sugar it is. Do I put in the sugar first? Oh no. No, I'm gonna melt my butter first. I'm gonna start low and slow, low and steady. But I can actually, wait a second, if I can adjust my temperature. What are the consequences of overcooking my sugar? Uh, oh shit, no. 250 is harumble, which is the, uh, the forbidden. One cup of cream. One, one cup of butter. One to one, it'll be like bechamel, right? When you're making bechamel, you want one to one ratios. One cup. Oh, it's handy that it has those lines. Yeah, this is this is just like cheating. Do people know about these? Oh, temperature's already coming up. Okay, that's interesting. This, these sort of candy recipes are usually stupidly simple, so I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that a cup of sugar should be enough. Oh, is that gonna? You know what? That seems maybe a bit too much. Let's take a bit of sugar out because we're gonna add some butter. I'm going to add my butter at the end because I think that might result in a better flavor. We don't want to uh, burn the butter in with the rest of it. Add that in, messily and stick. Turn on power. Um, brush off the thingamometer in there. 
That's a peculiar smell. That's probably fine. Why not take your time and be conservative and like hedge your bets? You know, when you don't know what you're doing or what the ratios are. Melt faster. I've made caramel before, but never fudge, so. You think they're that different? <sighs> yeah, actually I do. I think fudge is gonna be, is meant to be softer on the palate and uh, less chewy, more of just like a, a chomp chomp and then kind of suck on it to let it just uh, absorb into your mouth hole. But caramel, you want to really get, you really want to caramelize, you want to caramelize the sugar. So you want to deepen the color. And I think fudge, you could just get away with just melting things down. So you're adding the milk now? Yeah, I'm just gonna do it all at once. Basically, I'm gonna make my, I'm gonna make a slurry and I'm going to cook it because like what happens if you overcook condensed milk, you get dulce de leche, which might not actually work very well considering I'm trying to do peppermint, but you know, whatever, like I think I'm okay. Okay. I have definitely looked up a fudge recipe before in my life, but every single time I have looked up a fudge recipe, I've gone, oh shit, man, that looks really hard. God, that looks fidgety. So why are there so many steps? How much of those fudge recipes have you retained to memory? Absolutely none, because I've never made it. This goes up to 120 and I'm looking for 116. Where are you at now? Uh, 70? No, not even, 50, 55. Where are the gradations on this? Looks like they're every five degrees. Steady on. No, no boiling. No boiling you. It's just like us. It's doing its best. Dear butter, please stop being butter and join the party. What was that? That was a pinch of Himalayan pink salt. And I'll and I will taste it later. And see if I want to add more salt but I probably won't. James can clean that up later. All right. Uh, sugar. Maybe we should have added that more slowly. If this doesn't seem to be like setting up, I am also not opposed to adding more sugar. But I think this will be just fine. What happens when you get to 112? Or 116. I assume I take it off the heat and then slowly add it to the to the milk. There we go. There we go. We're up at 100. 100 degrees. It's it's boiling, as water will do at 100 degrees. 110. Let's let's bring it off the hot plate there. Well, this is why I have a whisk. Ooh, I'm glad I started with a quarter cup. That looks hella fudgy. Yeah, you can see when I add the, the syrup to it, it boils it in spots. Oh, wow, we're there, we're there. Okay, I'm so gonna take this off now, the heat. We get, well, I mean, the heat stops. I should probably not stir it anymore. You're already at 116? Yeah, it's... Oh, no, wait. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. I was not at uh, at all at 116. I was at 116 Fahrenheit. It's these multi-scales of temperature. This is what killed the Mars rovers. I've dropped my spoon into the not fudge. How are you feeling? I think this is a noble first attempt. Right. Well, you only get one attempt. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. All right. Well, there we go. Oh, that smells really good. To be fully honest, I really don't like flying without a net like this. Instructions. I like to experiment. I like to improvise when it comes to, uh, you know, certain ingredients, but recipes are recipes for a reason because they are a set of instructions that will guarantee you, if you follow them correctly, a proper result. One half tablespoon of cocoa. 
I know what chocolate fudge should look like. I think I've ruined it. I think I've ruined it. I think everything's ruined now. Just from putting the cocoa in? I've ruined Christmas. I could probably use a fork. Candy cane time. Oh, they're splashing. Oh, 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 okay, we got brown. We got brown forming. There is some, that's probably not good. We don't want that probably. Or do we? God, that smells good. And that's it. Power off. The crust is very warm. The mouthfeel is wrong because it's not cooked, but that tastes like fudge. Oh, it's all like starting to stick to the spoon because like the sugar's partially melted, but not really. No, you're still wrapped in plastic. Just like Laura Palmer. That was a weird thing to say at this exact moment in time, Cameron. I wonder why I said that. Hmm. Verdict is that I will not be adding any more salt. Okay, what we're doing basically is boiling off all the water and hopefully leaving it as some kind of thickened, fatty, chocolatey, sugary mass that can be eaten by humans without killing them. That sounds like fudge. Tablespoon's probably too much, so let's start with a, uh, a teaspoon and hope that that, I mean, vanilla's pretty strong, and this is artificial vanilla, which is usually stronger. Oh, that's, that's the stuff. Now, some people might say, now, hold on, if you're truly trying to make ignorant fudge, why do you have a candy thermometer? Isn't that cheating? No, that's so I don't start a fire by, like, immolating sugar. Oh, is that a bubble forming because it's hot? It might be. So I want to do like candy cane sprinkles on top. I'm gonna, I'm gonna peel them and then I'm going to beat them against the wall until they are dead. It's important to note that candy canes are made of just like cooked sugar, so they'll just melt. Maybe we should extract these. I feel that somewhere there's a Belgian man screaming and doesn't know why. Doesn't even matter how hard he try. So what I just want to do is um, crush them up and sprinkle them on top, you know, and then they'll sort of like set into the top of the fudge. Oh, it's shit, it's starting to boil. Oh, oh, and look over there. Oh no, oh no, that's, that's the bad smell. That's the bad smell. That's the burning smell. No, I got confident. I got cocky. Oh, sh look at that. Where, where, where it came off my spatula. This is like fudgy sauce. Now what do I do? God, it already seems so hot. Why do I want to get this hotter? It is officially boiling. Oh God, why does it seem so dangerous to make sugar go hotter than that? That's already boiling. This is too much excitement. This is too much stress. What, huh? This sure does look liquidy. I wonder if this is going to set up at all. Oh no, I definitely burned it. Back. Oh no. Oh, peppermint extract. You sweet, you sweet, strong, powerful thing. Oh, you shall hide my sins. Whoa, I just got a cloud of mint smoke. Oh God, this is so bad. Uh, I think I burned the shit out of this. Oh no! Holy moly. This is gonna be very granular fudge. Oh, but it looks fudgy. Holy crap. We're done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna transfer it to a freezer container with board lid and we'll uh we'll put it in in the fridge probably i think that seems reasonable and then we'll we'll see what happens to it 
Hush you. Oh, there's a lot more of it than I thought there would be. And then I'll do the dishes for the next person. I got to go first. I had nice clean dishes. These other people are my friends. As far as you know. Badoom. Nope. Mm. This seems like this is about as good as we're going to get. We got all those nice little brown chunks from the burning on the bottom. That's extra flavor punch. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're, 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 they're the, this is, this is the chunky kind. The fudge that eats like a meal. Mm, mm, mm. Now that's what I call a plate of hot brown. Last thing, of course, before it completely sets up is I want to make sure to get the sea salt on top so that it uh, connects. Let's get it. That's pretty good. Cool. Just call me motherfucking Martha Stewart. Don't call me Gwyneth Paltrow because she's kind of a fruitcake. Ha! Ah! <laughs> the pan is hot. That's good to know. It's probably doing awful things to the countertop, but that seems like a James problem. Hush you. All right. I'm I'm really excited to see how this turns out. Look, it it, it came right flush to the to the top. That's that's the power of science, inter, inter, internet. That's the fudge. Well, how'd it go, team? I think I made gravy. Mine's starting to set up, and I think I might have actually succeeded in spite of myself. Did you put salt on top of yours? Yes. Ah. Uh, I see. Yeah, I think my fudge is overcooked. Yeah, I mean, like softball to, to, to crack is really where. That's what I wanted to avoid. I wanted to avoid the granular texture. Mine is very gooey. Yeah, we're gonna have to let these age in a cave for a while. That's what you do with fudge, right? Mm -hmm. How long does fudge take to set? Well, I feel it shouldn't need to. It's gonna get cool. This is like not good, but I'm proud of it. And I feel like we're all gonna love our sugary babies too much. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to, you know, decide amongst ourselves fairly mm -hmm. and non-subjectively what the best fudge is. So why don't we see what people think back in the studio? Welcome back to the studio. It is I, the fudge judge. On my far right, Benjamin the fudge bailiff. And between us, Heather the fudge bunny. All three of the jobs were taken. True. I'm excited to try <laughs> these fudge and fudge-related <laughs> items. Uh, so let's get into it. Bring on the first fudge. Oh, uh, hold on, hold on. Hold you, on. You, you, you are not a fudger. Yeah, no. Well, but you, you're, you're forgetting something. What? You, well, you haven't eaten your dinner first. You can't just eat fudge. Oh. It's oh. dinner time. That's, well, a, that's true. Is here. So I have ordered you dinner. Oh, oh that's what kind of you. This oh, pizza is, is the Boston Pizza Christmas Pizza, uh -huh. which has been advertised ad infinitum here in Canada for the last month. Oh no! And, what? and I'm excited for you to try it because what it is is whoa turkey uh -huh. stuffing <laughs> chives, uh -huh. uh, and oh. then on the side uh, we have uh, cranberry sauce. And gravy. Oh my god, I'm so How, ready for this. By on the side, you mean it's not going to be on the side for very long. Yeah. So okay. if you'd like to grab your piece of pizza, I would. Yes. Let's... Uh, I have I have warmed it up uh, because it it did arrive um, about a half an hour ago. Oh, good. So it's on the cooler side. Hi, turkey is turkey is great. Um, would you like some cranberry sauce? I would love some cranberry for sauce. Leftovers. Yeah. All right. Um, would you like some gravy? I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah, Let's you, just you heck up the whole thing. There, there is still cheese on here. Yes, yeah. there is cheese. It's uh, still could a pizza. you pass that down the line? Quite a blorp there. In the, uh, yeah, well, I mean... Yeah, all right. This, here you go, Ben. So, all right. Sit, sit, I'm so pumped. Sit tight for a sec while yeah. Heather and I get our... I'll get our... On. So, I've specifically always said that anything is good on pizza. 
Like uh, that, we're that's about still to see like how a, true that is. Yeah, like I I will eat anything on a pizza, and this. I like all those things. It smells like no it exception. Be, yeah, it can't be bad. My, now I have seen the commercials for these, James, and they say that they also, for whatever reason, in, inexplicably come with a Toblerone bar. Yes, those are in the fridge. Oh, good. Oh, sick. Uh, all right. You don't get those because oh. you have fudge. Right, we have dessert, yeah, don't we? Yeah, exactly. Can I get like a little bit extra gravy? Uh, no, you cannot. Oh. You get there's no gravy, gravy in the first bite. So well, that's why you spread, spread it, it around. around. What with what? Your I, finger. I used the knife. Well, Merry Christmas, I guess. Are we in? We good? Hold on, sorry. I'll wait yeah, until no, Ben's let me, finished let me spreading also it around. Spread. How's the gravy? Um, not bad. I got more cranberry sauce than anything. All right. All right, go for it. Okay. <laughs> no. Hey Ben, does it still ring true? Yeah, I think it's good, but oh, the uh, oh. well, the the, the stuffing this, is really soft. This really throws into a sharp mm. contrast how bad Boston Pizza's pizza crust is. It's very uncooked dough. Yeah. Oh my mm. god. James, can you buy us food more often? Strong rosemary flavor on the turkey. <laughs> I never I never expected to get like cheese, cranberry, turkey, and stuffing all in like one kind of bite. It tastes like it's on garlic bread. It more does. Than, um, more than regular pizza dough. Yeah. It does like it doesn't taste like garlic, but it definitely has that has that texture. This is you know, all the individual flavors of the toppings. Uh are actually pretty good. They stand out. They you can taste literally everything <laughs> on this pizza. Yeah, you can you can define it all individually. Mm. But I don't know that it is um, uh, done any favors by the combination of the pizza crust and the cheese. Nope. Hmm. Like if it was just the stuff between the crust and the cheese on a plate, it would be not unusual really in any way. Well, mm -hmm. okay. So the thing about Boston pizza, like pizza, is. I don't know if you're able to see this on camera, but there's no definition between like the crust and where like the the pizza part is. Yeah, it's all just dough. It's just it's just flat, right? And so you it ends where the cheese ends. This is effectively what you decided to call the crust, and it's not it doesn't like bake anymore. It's just a it's just a flat sphere with bits of with flecks of cheese on it. I think I know how <laughs> to improve it though. Huh. Next time we just order double the toppings. Oh, well, see, you think that. But mm. I once had an everything pizza, and it just don't cook right. I worked at a pizza place. Well, this no. wasn't, this, I a, don't think this was cooked all the way. There's yeah. a certain the point where if you put too many toppings on it, because a lot of toppings have uh, a lot of water content in them, it will m make your pizza into a grease wheel of hmm. not anything. I I would like to point out uh, for those of you watching who might be from uh, the Boston area mm. that um, the Canadian pizza chain or Canadian food chain Boston, Boston pizza, pizza. It's from my home. Has nothing to do with Boston. Yeah. Nope. It was created. Boston pizza originates in Alberta. And it, it just they thought it was a good name, I guess. Was Apparently it? you can't like. Trademark the name of your town. <laughs> it was invented by a guy that's on our Shark Tank. Yeah, wow. or he bought it anyway. I think he like bought another company and renamed it that yeah. or something. Anyway, well, thank you, James. Yeah, I, I feel welcome. like I've had a sub a, a sufficient amount of dinner to enjoy uh, dessert. So let's let's continue. And uh, I have removed my I've removed my judge fudging wig on account of it's very very warm. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm now full of. You don't turkey. want the fudge to melt. Wait, wait. Does that does that mean that this is going to be a non non officially judged fudge? This is unsanctioned fudgening. Oh, hmm. dear. So uh, yes, as uh, as I said, we're now back in the studio, and uh, as fudge judge, let's bring on the first fudger. Oh, um, should it be shaking like that? Should it be moving? Is, is it live? Let's find out. Yeah, please. So I, I've watched... Um, you have to talk into the... I've been watching on YouTube a lot of, like, old army ration videos. Uh-huh. Oh! The fudge goes into army ra... Oh, it's set up. Good! Uh, <laughs> now, these were these were made a couple weeks ago. <laughs> um, I, I, I 
the reason you see the lines across it is that I dragged a fork across it before it putting it away. Okay, and so it's set. Something yeah, happened. It's it's. I don't know if I'll be able it's to. It's gluey. It's gluey. I was so my plan was to um, uh, upturn these all, mm. upturn the loaves. It might not have the integrity to. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, I, it's it looks like a creme brulee that you could crack on the it's, top. It's a little soft. It's a little soft. Ooh, I think you've made. I think you've made toffee. <laughs> like you can. <laughs> So let's let me try to cut a and I'm using the word optimistically slice of fudge. I uh, anyway, it, <laughs> fudge was a, was a staple in American army rations in the middle of the century because fudge apparently keeps forever. Yes. So is, I, is I this, hope I made fudge. Is this fudge um, I think we made a spoon. <laughs> oh, we got some toffee. It's um until it's stiff peaks form. I feel like it needs more time to set. <laughs> it's been like a week and a half. I, three. Three. It weeks. has not been three weeks. It's been three weeks. The, the yeah. date is on the top. It's been. Oh, it has been three weeks. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll just have some of this then. Um, Grab a spoon. Yeah. Nah. I mean, next time I'll know to put in more sugar. Apparently, but I'm allergic to dairy, so honestly, my interest in, in in fudge is kind of. Minimal. I don't know if they're food safe. Oh, that's a good point. You know the flavor, the flavor is solid actually, like the 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 peppermint flavor. Uh, oh yeah, is is really good. I want to go fishing around for one of those candy canes. I think, it, I, think, oh, I, I, think I got them all out. Okay, good. That okay. may be better. I'm, hmm. I'm going to the the very bottom. I'm gonna get the full the full meal deal here. Yeah, honestly, the flavor is really strong. It is. I I think you may have made like fudge oh. Nutella. It's tech. <laughs> it's texturally not amazing, and I, that might be what Ben is struggling with presently. Yeah. How, how are you doing, Ben? It's strong. You know, like as a kid. <laughs> when when you find like the jar like the the thing of cocoa uh -huh. and you're like oh that's just chocolate and you like scoop a mouthful of like the powder or whatever that's what this tastes like to me but like liquidy in a way hmm. you want do you want to try some of your yeah. creation it's yeah, not sure. it's not to my taste i think i'm not super <sighs> stoked by the peppermint but like it's mm. there you can take you can taste it yeah, as a spread on toast. You need, ah, yes. Oh yeah, toast. If we could spread this, on, or like like a shortbread cookie or something. If only you had some bread in front of you. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> always say yes. There. Get the cheese off it. Uh oh, -uh. all the way. Bread helps. Yeah. Not just bread, but yeah. bread. You know, I've been an improver for seven years, and this is the time I'm going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to bread if you want. Maybe, maybe even longer. This. Yeah. No, no shame at all. None of you. No, that that was a bad was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> you do not feel any shame, Cam. No, do you? Yeah, you, don't. You, you I performed. would not have been able to do any of that. Yeah, you performed admirably. Yeah. Because I subjected you to it. Thank you. Really, you, you got to get in there. Enjoy. Like this, this feels like the beginnings of a fudge. Mm. It feels almost like a frosting. Okay, like a, like it does. A, like yes. a cake frosting. Where do those paper towels go? This is what my dentist put on my teeth, <laughs> and then they grind it off with the. Yeah, I don't remember what flavor I asked him for. I think I said like mint chocolate. <laughs> mint mint clit. <laughs> Mm. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for just trying to plow through that one. Uh, well, then, all right. Thank you, Cam. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm done with it. Yeah, yep. okay. all right. Thank you, Cam. <laughs> Terrific. Congratulations on creating that. Something. James definitely brought paper. There they are. Kathleen is our next chef. Please join us and bring those paper towels with you. Thank you so much. Ben, do you want to wipe your fingers off? Sure. Oh, wait. This seat's so low. Hello. Wait. <clears throat> Just Aww. lower the seat all the way. Hello, I am a four-year-old girl who's made fudge for the very first time. Aww. But uh, I did. I made fudge for the very first time on November 30th, 2019, where I fudge, question mark, quotation marks, 
So let's see. Now mine. Oh. Jesus. That was oh very weighty. That's uh, it's solid. Is, yeah, is is uh, mass one of the things that you're being marked on? I mean, fudge is usually a fairly solid. Yeah. Ah, now you've got parchment paper on yours, so yeah. we, should, oh. we should be able to so, pull it out. Oh, there's a dressing. Yeah, Kathleen did did. Um, I wanted oh. to get it at Oh, easily, so wonderful! Par parchment paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, but there's parchment paper stuck into the corners. Which That's happens? fine. That's okay. That is. <laughs> I mean, it... <laughs> that is dense. It might be slightly overcooked. <laughs> <laughs> it's also. Hang on, I'm just gonna stand up. <laughs> Wow. Well, there we go. All right. I will note that our knives at the moon base are not the best to begin with. Looking good. I definitely overcooked my fudge. It's yeah. it's too hard. The candy cans are not doing They're any guarding. They're protecting favors. it. Oh, it's crumbling. Okay. Oh no. Can I have a piece of pumpernickel? <laughs> Please. Yeah, I can can made Nutella and I think you may have made biscotti. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Certainly got so mine's also Opposite peppermint textures. flavored, but I used peppermint extract. Right, cheers, everyone. Hey! Mm -hmm. This is really good. It's very close, I think. I think I think this is fudge. Yes. Mm. Like this? Now, this is definitely three-week-old fudge. But it tastes like fudge. It and, does. And you get all the peppermint and whatnot really that do, you were trying to bring. The flavor is very well-balanced. I feel yeah, like it's just not... Yeah, you don't taste the burnt at all. Well, you were, you were also the only cook that, like, tasted as you made it. I think I think yeah. it's just missing uh, the smooth texture out of fudge. But I think otherwise you're practically there. Yes. Yes, I think I think it, this is definitely fudge. Hmm. I'm, I'm actually pretty The pregnant. topping is... It's, it's, it's also very attractive. It'll, yeah. Like... Just don't drop it the, on the anyone. Crumbled, the crumbled candy cane topping is very nice no. and, like, sparkling in the light. I want to make sure I test this like I did the other one. Oh yeah, with the bread, perfect. <laughs> I mean, I'm I will refrain. Got to put it through so, the same paces. This is I could eat a lot of this. It's actually, actually, it's actually like, pretty you know, good. Water or something. The bread detracts from this one. My ratio was. Oh, let's not do the weird hard edge piece. My ratio was half a cup of butter. I'm you like, want to hammer that? Yeah. How much Two. of a piece do you want to cut off? That, that, that much of a I'm piece. I want to take it out and see because uh, I know somebody wants to sample it out in the friend zone. But uh, it was half a cup of butter, two cups of sugar, and then condensed milk, and a quarter cup of cocoa. Oh, I can feel this whole table <laughs> vibrating from how much effort Graham Stark, uh, there we Graham go. Stark, so fu Judge Fudge. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, yeah. But then, like, it just crumbles to dust. It's, a, a, it's a gorgeous cross-section, though. There, it really is. It, That's nice. There's a stratified layer upon which it has sheared. Yeah. Like, it'll just sort of... This part will just sort of come right off, but... That's strong. All yeah, right. Put it on the... Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm excited to see if anybody gets sick from eating this. All right. Me too. I mean, we had other options. It might not be yours. Yeah, it could have been anything. Yeah. Stay tuned, the pizza. I guess, for the... We'll uh, blame Boston Pizza. Yeah, the, yeah. Bo the, the Boxing Day stream I, I may or may eat, not I, happen. This is, I, this is really tasty. I want to eat more of this, but I, we're, we, have a third, we have a third chef and a third flavor of fudge. Wait, yeah. he said something about a vanilla thing? It's the finest of the flavors. Yeah, we were yeah. watching some of that video. I, yeah. I, I feel like if if uh, you got sick and then went to, like, Boston Pizza to be like, hey, you guys made us sick. That had a nice fudge slap to it. Sup. Yeah. Good fudge slap, Ian. <laughs> fudge, fudge slap. Fudge, fudge slap fudge is slap. one of the first things that we judge a fudge on. Fudge mm -hmm. slap baby, yes. Well. Mm. Oh. Uh, mm, uh, oh. Mm. oh, no. <laughs> now... Was it not a different color? So this is so this is uh, a it's a little known variety of fudge called a sponge fudge. Mm. Ah. Yes. Sponge fudge square pots. It, it, it observes the, 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 the flavors <laughs> around it in the fridge. Yes. So uh, let's see if we can. It appears to have aerated itself. Ooh, okay. So the texture is not. It's certainly not soupy. Oh, is this like the? Is this gonna be? It's not sticky. Is this gonna be like a Goldilocks and the Three Bears scenario? I hope so. I, I have to level with you, Ian. I'm I'm not totally confident that that's gonna be the case. But, 
<laughs> well, just in terms, at least of the cutting. Let the me, other one was too soupy. True. This, the, 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 last, the last one we had was too hard. Let me at least have hope start. This one cuts out. Oh, yep, get that good slap. Cuts out just right. My, my hope is going to... Um, no, well... It is a tap. Well. Okay. I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to do this, this thing. Like, ha- Kathleen definitely had oh, the pro strat with the, yeah. uh, oh. with the parchment paper. Oh, boy, oh boy, that, but that may be dangerous. I think, yeah, we need... no, I think this would be okay. I'm curious uh, to see the strata. Uh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, have, we, we have the close-up there? Oh, dear. Uh, <gasps> turns out the top layer oh. is oh. thick. Ian made a flan. <laughs> Giga pudding. <laughs> Pudi pudding. Uh, that just is creme brulee. I, hmm. Yeah. Do I get what? a blowtorch? Uh, would you? Maybe. I will now attempt to slice the fudge. <laughs> oh, it's so hard on top and so goopy on the bottom. Just like me. <laughs> no, what? You know what? No, this is this is definitely a three bear situation. Yeah. Too soft, too hard, both. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite part of this story. <laughs> it's this... when it she just was sending both. <laughs> this, this soup is too hot. This soup is too cold. Both. <laughs> this, <laughs> both. This bed is too small. This bed is too big. But this bed defies time and space. Yeah. Oh, it's go. It's moving now. Um, <laughs> it's trying a, to escape. I've made a glacier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh no! Well, Ooh, okay. Mm, that looks. <laughs> oh man! Here, I'll just. I don't want to eat this. I'll have this part. <laughs> if you sort of use the top like a like a little <laughs> sandwich, like, yeah, like a saltine. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it looks like baked like brie on a cracker. It <laughs> does, doesn't it? It does look like brie. Oh no! Here we go. <laughs> Smells <Ooh>. okay. <laughs> oh, that's a good face. Ow. <laughs> it's it, everyone's flavor has been wonderful today. <laughs> I think we might need to move the cutting board over. Okay, I don't know that it's fudge, but it's not bad. It's just uncontainable. <laughs> Here, please. It's, oh, it's, you're passing down thing. the charcuterie board. I don't have an option. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has is... actually invented an entirely different new. Uh, this dessert. is a this is a completely new dessert. Yeah, that's a good way to We're put it. We're gonna have to launder this. Mm-hmm. Uh, <sighs> yeah, use the yeah. Yeah. Nope. All right. Whoops! I put my hand right. down in it. Is the judge supposed to be able to say something like that? What? I put my hand down no, in no, it. No, no, I, I, we should launder this. Oh, <laughs> this tablecloth. Yeah. I feel like I'm eating really watery cookie dough. <laughs> okay, I gotta like, try. You wanna try this? some? Come on. In. I think it's, it's actually quite good. Yeah, um, again, the vanilla flavor is is very well balanced. Yeah. Um, How do I? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here, let me uh, let me cut you a quadrant. And just so it seems like get there you yourself go. in you there. Sort of like. Can I just keep borrowing that for a second? Yeah, I'll go sort of take a scoop. Uh huh. It seems like texture was the Grab most, by the, was the most difficult by the, by part. The crust. Grab it by the crust. Yes. This, this is basically when you reach and you want to. This is the, this is what you get off of oh. the the, the, yeah. the beaters. Flavor wise, yeah. again, yeah, Ian did a fantastic job. It's so granular. It's, it's got. I like the texture. I can feel every bit of sugar that you put in this bad boy. <laughs> yeah. Every 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 minute granule of of sugar. Oh, the spin I am dash aware had a great of. suggestion. Mm. Oh. Okay, oh. this bread does not improve it, but I think crackers oh. would. Mm-hmm. So this mm-hmm. is Kathleen's fudge dipped into Ian's fudge. Oh, yeah, right. So, so Ian, do you, do you think you know where you went wrong? Yes, I looked up a recipe afterwards, and it's oh. time. Oh, it's all time. Oh, really? So you got all the all the actual stuff correct, mostly. It's just the uh, uh, the actual implementation. I think most of most, how do you make fudge? So most of us, I, like again, <laughs> I like a sieve, but uh, most of us got the, uh, the the ratios pretty okay in terms of amount of milk to sugar ratio. What we didn't do is boil for fifteen minutes. Oh, uh, you, have to, you have to hold it at that yes. at, the, at the fudge temperature. It's not just bringing it up to the temperature. You need to bring it up. And hold it there. Oh. And hold, hold, and then. Interesting. Did you find out what Harumba Bowl is? 
Uh, wow. Um, uh, the the ability to uh, become a short lived meme. Hmm. I see. Yeah. Great. Well, that was that 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 was the fudge. We have judged the fudge and judged it all delicious. If uh, you should take off, Ian. If impractical in in a couple different. A uh, couple different ways. I mean, I, I learned that everybody that like everybody put their effort into it at an equal rate, and we all saw success in different ways. Mm-hmm. Each of these, each of these fudges shone on their own merits. Yeah, I mean, th- th- you can only go so, and we said this in the video. You can only go so wrong when your baseline is a bunch of sugar and butter and dairy. I think next time, though, maybe we should go for pudding. Well, then Ian's already succeeded. And so is Cam. Only only half. Well, okay. If we skim the crust of Ian's fudge, then he has succeeded in making pudding. Cam's already made pudding, and I guess we'll have to... I mean, I think Kathleen could succeed at making pudding. I think so, yeah. She she definitely succeeded in the most solid of fudge. Yeah. Mm. Wouldn't have thought to keep it there for 15 minutes. Well, um... Uh... Should we stretch briefly to give Ian more time? Absolutely. Because he forgot that he was on next. He was supposed to come on second. second. Yeah, I don't know what happened to the order of operations there, but... Nope. No clue. All right. That being said, we do have a thing that we can throw to afterwards, but... Uh, yeah, we are going to go to see something now, but it's only a couple minutes long, so uh, we may... We <laughs> just want to give him, like, we know what you may... know, an extra 30 seconds well, or may, so. Well, perhaps, perhaps we'll stretch on the back half. Yeah, we can Let's see how it goes. Um, for the next few minutes, oh. however... I'm so upset about the pun that the chat doesn't know you made. Uh-huh. Oh. No, I mean like come back to camera seven and just well, it'll kill it'll time it'll, it'll be fine. Doing. We're Whatever. doing it live. Or Something's just hold happening. on a black screen while Ian figures figures his life out. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, don't go away because there's a, there's more to watch. There's this. Enjoy this. We three kings of internet are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain Dudes we have walked so far Oh, star of wonder, star so tight Star that's really super bright Comfy seats and lo-fi beats make this a perfect night. Born the king of Bethlehem's plain, this sweet rig I bring him to game. Dota, PUBG, Fortnite, Destiny, griefers will fear his name. Oh, star of wonder, star so tight, Star that's really super bright. Comfy seats and lo-fi beats make this a perfect night. Legal weed to offer have I, the need to relax, be satisfied. Part indica, part sativa, he shall be Christ most high. Oh, star of wonder, star so tight, star that's really super bright. Comfy seats and lo-fi beats make this a perfect night. Dew is mine, it's tangy perfume, sweet on the tongue as you pwn noobs in doom. Chugging, sighing, dudes abiding, doing the stone cold dew. Oh, star of daylight, star so bright, star of early morning light. Eastward rising, so surprising, this land has gone all night. 
When the trees go up and the adults start to sing about a jolly old elf and the birth of a king and the New Year's bells are attuned to a ring, then we cats come out to munch on tinsel on a string. <laughs> It's that time of year again, fellow cats, when we jellicles gather to find out our fortunes for the coming year. That's right. And I think we have some cats about to arrive. But beware, there may be cats in your own home who will try to find their fortune by eating your tinsel. And you should not let them at all. Let's see who's ready to find out what the new year brings for them. <gasps> Oh, what's your name? James. James, come with me. Come with me to the Cat of Answers. Can I not? Oh, no. Please, place your hand upon <laughs> the lovely, lovely string, and let's extract a beautiful thing. Oh, no. <laughs> this is why I have a dog. Yes. Oh, oh. Let's see what fortune you found. <laughs> oh, a fortune! Read it out and let us know what it means to you. <laughs> if your heart is full, or if you are overwhelmed, you will have to deal with it. <laughs> it's true. Cool. It's absolutely true today, as the day it was written. Now, who next? desires to know what the new year will hold for them. I mean, I'm genuinely curious. Oh, I don't know about this curious, but I'm, I'm up for anything new. It's going to be magical one way or another. Oh, I'm please, sure it is. Follow old... What did you say your name was? <laughs> I, I, you know, I remember just until you asked me. <laughs> That's okay, you can you can make your own name. Chumbus Wumbus. Chumbus Wumbus. Chumbus Wumbus. It's a cat. It's a it's a pleasure to meet yes. you. Well, Give it a good yank. <laughs> it's okay, yes. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, it's a little stuck. Hold on, let me... I'm just gonna put that there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh. Oh. Sometimes it takes a bit of work, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I can well. feel my allergies going off. <sighs> what does it say? <laughs> It is an emotional time. It is the holidays, yes. It is a mental time. Mm -hmm. It is a spiritual time. So true. It is a physical time. Yes. You are going to experience a very different story from the story you've been told. What? Cool. I mean, yeah, I was happy with how things are going. But is it enlightening? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to try new things. Oh, so wonderful. I'm sure you'll have a magical new year. All right. It's starting off weird. Oh, so much, so much of the future hinges upon this thin thread. I wonder who will come next to grasp it. Why, it's you. Of course it is. Hello. <laughs> Would I'm you? To touch that. Oh, absolutely. All right. Touch it. Feel it. Make Get it on camera. Make it yours. <laughs> Please. Your turn is coming. Yes. Um, yeah, they seem a little, uh, tight. <laughs> oh, no! How oh, oh, no. are these fortunes? <laughs> I mean, a little stuck. just a little bit. Maybe, uh, maybe get your... Well, maybe I'll get my hand in there and help you out a bit. <laughs> oh, 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 yes! And you managed to, uh... Nope. Oh, there we go! <laughs> found out about ourselves today. This might be a little confusing. Uh -huh. It might not sound like a lot. Nope. But the feeling is real. Ah. If you only listen to the very small voice of a strange voice, mm -hmm. the sound will be in your body. It's true. Every day of our lives. Listen to that voice. I, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. How are you doing, cat? Are you... 
Ready to tell your next fortune? Yes. Who is our next? Yeah. Oh my child, child. <laughs> so many experiences you will have. No, just the one. <laughs> well, shall we discover what it is together? Oh, wow. Wow. Sorry. 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 Oh, wow. Sorry. Oh, wow. Sorry. Oh, no. Did it hit? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. There we go. Oh, wow. Well, that's like a whole bunch of them. Well, maybe just pull on the one that uh, appeals most to you. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to be straight with you. There's not a lot of room for movement within a cat, so I mean, sometimes things do get tangled up. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it is a cat, right? <laughs> it's oh. how we work. <laughs> There's a lot more there than I expected. <laughs> oh, this will be the day I take up drinking. It's <laughs> 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 much worse with the tail and the Couldn't we have done this through keyhole surgery? I, mm. I mean, not with your budget. Okay, hang on here. Oh, yes, there we go. Mm. So that is impacted. Hold up. There we go. Wait, 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 there we go. Oh, there's one. Okay, under. Mm hmm. Over. And then through. The rabbit goes around the tree and into its hole. <laughs> around the tree. The cable. Oh. <laughs> wow, you look like you've done this before, young lad. <laughs> okay, you're gonna get so much nip later. <laughs> okay. And what does the new year hold? Peering deep into the depths of your psyche <laughs> will be a very tempting task if you have no idea how much of a soul is in you. It might take you a few minutes. Mm, be ready for all that soul. Okay. And speaking of souls, why, here's another young new one now. Young soul. Oh. Mm, you are an old soul. Oh, thank you. God Most bless. Definitely an old soul. Not as old as this soul. No, no. Oh. This this one's going gone through a lot. It's seen quite a bit, but. Let's see what it sees for you. Well, I see something right there, but... but is that yours, to... or is that a vision for someone else? Perhaps, yeah. I love this. I love every part of this. Oh, oh, there we go. It's just hold of fortune back there. There's one. Yes, that's yours. Oh, good. That's yours. Oh, good. All right, listen up everyone. The spirit of our friendship is stronger than your memories. It is! If you can't remember for one reason or another, you will end up in the same situation. But why didn't we just say that to begin with? Such wisdom from GPT-2. Now, oh, hello. I know what you would like. It's knowledge of your future. All right. It's, it's just like starting a lawnmower. <laughs> All right. One good tug. And your year starts off. Oh, there it is. Dare you read it. Your lucky numbers are now higher than they were two decades ago. So oh. true! <laughs> Inflation in all things. Oh, buy a lottery ticket, young man. You never know what the universe has in store for you. Ah, and, oh, it's you. I've not seen one of your kind since you ascended. <laughs> Come. It's good to see you, my old friend. We must know why you are back amongst the living. <sighs> Please. Pull of the cat. Oh! 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 
Oh! Well, the man is a medical professional. He knows what he's doing. The last one. Poe says, yes. Panda's like eating bamboo, but I prefer mine dipped in chocolate. Practice makes perfect! And there I have it! After we practiced so many times, the perfect fortune! Huzzah! And a huzzah to you no, at home no, as well! No! Ah, <laughs> no! Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us no. today on Loading Ready Live. Please enjoy this. That makes us the last ones out. Yeah, here, I'll lock up. Oh, great, yeah, uh, happy holidays. Yeah, you too, buddy. Ben, you're the Steve now. No, no! <laughs> Somebody shit on my car.